views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio. Psychic Answers and Spiritual Solutions with Psychic Visionary and Vibrational Healers, Carol Dorian and Justice Welling, where you can call in and ask about your chakras, aura, and spiritual DNA. Tune in and discover the energy that is contradictive to your path of wholeness. Get ready to meet the most important person in your life, you. Well, hello, hello, everybody. We are so delighted to be here. This is your host, Carol Dorian. And this is your host, Justice Welling. And, you know, it's so good to have you back. Yeah. I We weren't here for the last show. Mm-hmm. And I know that you were actually teaching. I was doing a seminar. You were doing a mm-hmm. seminar on some of the things that we're really going to be talking about here today. And yeah. Today we're discussing opening your heart to receive your solutions and desires. And we're also going to be touching on Anahata meditation, which is a very strong tool in opening the heart to receive the solutions and what it is that we are desiring in our life. And I know that in Champagne, you were doing some teaching on this and how did, how was it? How was your time there? Uh, Champagne, Illinois is always a very interesting place to travel to. <laughs> it is. It is cute. Too. It's so cute and small and nice. And one of the main things that I like going to smaller places is that um, you can definitely see that the the people who live there and the people that travel there, they don't have a lot of, they're not very educated in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So I like going to places like Champagne because the information that we offer could really help that person find the right tool to their spiritual healing. A lot of people can't get the time off of work or whatever their situation may be to travel to bigger places like St. Louis or Chicago or anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I like doing seminars in these smaller places because it gives the opportunity to bring them information that they don't have. Yes, I, I noticed that like in Champaign and different smaller areas in, in Illinois, you know, it seems like and other places in the world, yeah. the resources are less when it comes to mind, body and spirit. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of churches. Yes, there is. And, you know, and that. That is beautiful as well. But when it comes to learning about the chakras, learning about your aura, learning about tuning into that inner voice that you have, and basically anything metaphysical, it seems to be kind of limited there. It is limited. It is. And that's, you know, what a lot of the people at the seminar, a lot of guests were saying, you know, we are limited. We want to know X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to know how to help ourselves. We want to know why we're feeling this way. We want to know what we can do. So giving them the tools and having them help their self and starting their spiritual journey was a wonderful experience. Isn't it? It's like, it's so awesome when you actually get a chance to introduce something to someone for the first time that will transform their life, change their life, take that person to... A desired level. And and basically, it's just introducing them to what they already have inside. Absolutely. And they never knew it. But you know, there's only so much you can get researching Google and the internet. You know, sometimes you need that one on one. Because Google cannot really answer very specific questions that you have. Exactly. And that's why I like the one-on-one and we really got a large response from Champagne because they loved that one-on-one because they don't have it there. So they were asking a bunch of questions in all areas about their chakra, their aura, their spiritual connection, the self-help, past lives, like everything that they wanted to know. And they really got the education I think that they needed. 
You know, that's really awesome. And also what I love about Anahata healing mm. is that when that's done, it can cover so many areas. You know, you you talk about past lives, mm -hmm. chakra, aura, wherever it is that a person is holding some type of hindrance or block, when you tap into Anahata energy and you use the Anahata method of meditation, wherever it's stemming from, you can get that breakthrough and you could get that release. And it's so wonderful to actually get a chance to introduce people to their heart. Yes. And, you know, in today's show, we're going to be really talking a lot about opening the heart, receiving the solutions, receiving your desires, because we may not be aware of it. But what it is that we're wanting, what it is that we're desiring, and our solutions can be right in front of us. And we're just not opening up to take it in, opening up to grab that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you saw when you were doing your seminar, your class there, that there were a lot of people that were surprised probably to see and to be able to feel what's going on inside on a new level, Absolutely. on a different level. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is that is really awesome. And again, it's great to have you back. We really did miss it's, you. It's great to be back. Awesome. So we're going to get right in here, you know, talking about receiving your solutions, receiving your desires. So many of us are desiring a shift in energy. How many times have you, I've asked myself, I'm sure you've asked yourself, our listeners have asked their self, when are things going to change? I've been working at it and I've been putting in so much effort. What is it going to take to get that change? We're desiring a shift in energy, a breakthrough. We want to go from that place of existing to a place of living. And for some, that place of living consists of finding or keeping a soulmate. For some, it's overcoming a health issue or reaching a stable place financially and for some of us, it actually may be all of the above. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever it is that you're desiring to draw into your life, you must receive it with an open heart. Your blessing, your shift, it may be right in front of you waiting to walk in and to enter boldly and abundantly into your life. But in order to receive it, we must open our heart. And this opening takes place at the gateway of the spiritual heart. This is where we learn how to listen to our own voice or our own spirit. Have you ever had so much going on in your life that you're just, you're not aware of when you have your thoughts, where are they coming from? What are, what am I hearing? Am I hearing my fear? Am I hearing my pain? Am I hearing my solution? Yeah. Am I hearing what I hope for? Am I hearing what is unrealistic? And you know, when we, when we're not sure where it's coming from, it's very easy to just dismiss all thoughts. And it's just very easy to say, I give up or I can't figure this out. I can't move forward. But the gateway of the spiritual heart, this is where you learn how to listen. And it's very important to learn how to listen because you have to learn to identify where the information is coming from. You know, we hear people say that we should be cautious sometimes of where we receive our information. Well, that doesn't just go for where you receive it outside of yourself what books you read or what people you talk to. It also goes toward where do you receive it within yourself? Are you receiving your thoughts and your information from your wounded self, your frightened self, your hopeful self, your evolved self, where you're receiving your information from is very important to discern and to learn how to listen to that voice to learn how to listen to the voice of your own spirit. And the gateway of the heart is past the heart chakra. 
It's the center and the core of it. So it's literally in the center of the heart. And it is responsible for absorbing. It is responsible for opening. It is responsible for letting in. There's so many words we could use for how the gateway of the spiritual heart works. But if I were to have to say, I'm going to sum it up and put it into a nutshell, what it would come down to is the gateway of the heart is responsible for opening and accepting. Imagine a gate. It would have to open for you to enter. So the gateway of the heart is that center. I'm sorry, leads to that center, that core of the heart chakra. It's past it. It's the very core of it. And we need to learn exactly how to hear from it. There's so many different portions of the heart that you can hear from. And we're going to be touching today on the portions of the heart that we actually hear from and how that works. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. You know, it, it is awesome. Whenever you talk about the heart and you talk about opening up and you talk about letting in, it is exciting. And sometimes people are making the mistake of, if I, of thinking, if I want this, then that means I'm opening myself up to it just because I want it. Wanting it isn't enough. There is an actual gateway that must be approached, must be opened, must be accessed to get into that place that you can hear from yourself. So there are those of you who have been trying to open your heart with meditation and prayer, and you've been doing so on a very complete level. And we've heard from a lot of you. You've been sending in emails and talking about the meditations that you've been doing and the methods that you've been using. And we're going to be discussing more about the meditation, the prayer, and hindrance and obstacles of the subconscious mind when we return from this short break. Hi, this is Connie Five, your unstoppable diva, your host of Up or Out with Connie. I am thrilled to be a headline show on C-Suite Network, where you can grow your brand, grow your tribe, and be unstoppable. We are the hottest podcast for entrepreneurs, C-level executives, and market leaders. And you can hear me each week right here on the C-Suite Network. Also on Conscious Business Network, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, and over 900 stations around the globe. Be sure to follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Be bold, be connected, and be unstoppable. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Discover the healing medicine from the giant monkey tree frog, Cambo. Cambo practitioner Ginny Rutherford and professional psychic Todd Rolson have come together for lively discussions of alternative healing medicines from the Amazon. Ginny and Todd bring you Cambo Talk Radio. Tune in each Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear from guests all over the world with real life stories and the medicinal benefits of Cambo. For more information, visit CamboKiss.com. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. 
Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. And we are back. It's so good to be back. And we're here talking about receiving your solutions, receiving what it is that you desire and opening up that spiritual gateway of the heart. And so before break, I was touching on the fact that there are those of you who have been trying to open your heart with prayer and meditation, and you've done so on a very, very complete level. However, there are some People who have contacted me talking about they have attempted to do certain heart meditations, but they're not sure how to go about doing those meditations and not sure how to open up that gateway to the heart to receive their solutions and their desires. And so for those people who have had difficulties and who have experienced hindrance and obstacles, these hindrance and obstacles sometimes are in the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind at times uses meditation or healing work to ignore the block that is at our gateway of the spiritual heart versus removing the hindrance and the blockages. So again, the meditation, if it's not applied correctly and it is not the proper meditation, it becomes actually a tool that is working kind of against the purpose and ignoring. It's helping us drown out what's going on instead of approach what is going on that is stopping that heart, that gateway of opening. So The main hindrances that cause the obstacle of opening the heart are internal blocks and limiting beliefs. These internal blocks, these limiting beliefs, they are the main hindrances. And what it does is it drowns out the voice of the spirit. It seals the aura closed so that new experiences are not able to enter in. And these are the deep-rooted beliefs that drill that false failing prophecy that you will never be successful or that you don't deserve to be, or perhaps it's actually your own greatness that scares you the most. And that happens. So when I'm working with people who are at a place in their life that They need to hear from their self. And they're not sure what it is that they're hearing. I've had people say, I have gone into meditation and my thoughts are all over the place. I'm thinking of what I'm going to be cooking for dinner. Absolutely. I'm thinking of a conversation I had with a coworker. I'm thinking of something that happened that feels so irrelevant 10 years ago. That's right. I'm thinking of what it is that I would like to happen. I'm playing out scenarios in my mind. If I could go back to that time, how would I have said that or unsaid it? Exactly, differently, yeah. So what this is, is this is is turbulence. Mm -hmm. This is where the mind is up and down. And that's okay, that happens. It, It is a natural response at times when the mind is in a place to be quiet and it's not used to being quiet, it can go all over the place. But what is important 
is to be able to get to the place where those thoughts come in, you hear them, you understand them, you let them pass, and then you can hear what it is that is at the very core, that message, that understanding that is within you. Because I tell all of the people that I work with, and I mean it completely and totally, you are always the guru. You have yeah, your answers. In your inner guru. Yeah. Yes, you you are the guru. You have the answers. It's just a matter of getting past that. So in Anahata meditation, this is where we access the willing portions of the heart. There are different portions of the heart. There is the unaccepting, the willing, the unwilling, the resentful, the forgiving, the unforgiving. So when we say heart, you know, people just connect and associate heart with love. But there are so many different portions of the heart. It has so many different functions. And it's, it is where we access that willing portion of the heart. In yogic meditation practices, the heart is called anahata. Anahata is the translated word from ancient Sanskrit to mean unstruck, unhurt, or unbeaten. And I'd like to reflect a little bit on that. So if you take the word anahata, it's talking about the most pure form, the purest portion of one's heart, the portion of you that is not reacting by pain, rejection, and disappointment of the past, unstruck, unhurt, or unbeaten. It is that part of the heart that can feel and connect to basically without fear. And through this, we are addressing the internal blocks and the limiting beliefs. And I'd like to touch on what are the limiting beliefs? You know, so many of us feel so limited. So we have these wonderful desires, these wonderful goals, but we're not really able to connect to them as a reality. It feels like this is fantasy because we are limited. And limiting beliefs are, I cannot do this. I do not deserve this. Last time I attempted this, I failed. These are all of the limiting beliefs. So, in the limiting beliefs, in order to reach that gateway, we have to bring the limiting beliefs basically to the surface. And that is what we do through anahata meditation. We bring them to the surface and we release them. And that's where we're accessing the spiritual heart. And this is where we take the person through the meditative state and we are asking, what am I afraid of? What is holding me back? And then after these questions are asked, you are guided through some breath work. And this is to assist you in hearing from the unstruck portion of the heart. This is where the voice of your heart and soul can rise up over that negative chatter that's going on in the brain at times. And in order to hear the heart's truths, wants and desires, we must address prior to that, the destructive thoughts, bring them to the surface so that we can heal them. And then we are able to hear from the authentic, unwounded self. So one of the strongest ways to approach and open the gateway of the heart, and there are other methods, but one of the strongest methods and most successful that I have used are the Anahata meditations. 
in opening the gateway to the heart, sometimes we're going to find that the limiting beliefs are not actually our own beliefs. They are the beliefs of others that have been imposed upon us. I have worked with so many people who have been taught, sometimes it's due to culture, sometimes it's due to religion, sometimes it's due to the structure that's been set in front of them. This is how you're going to think. This is how you should feel. It's a, it, it is wrong or sinful to think another way. And so we embrace this and we, we're almost afraid to hear from ourselves at times for people who are going through something like that and coming from that type of teaching or who have had these type of beliefs imposed upon them. It's like afraid to hear something other than what they've been taught or led to believe because it goes against that teaching. And in the Anahata meditation, we are approaching what is naturally yours, what really belongs to you, and sorting out what's been imposed upon you, separating and dividing your desire in comparison to the desire that other people have for you. And all of that, again, comes down to being able to hear from authentic self. So when we talk about opening our heart, it's talking about understanding, desiring, and wanting self and opening up to self. There's so many books out there and so many seminars that have, I have attended and taught that are about forgiving in order to release and letting certain people in or cutting cords. And all of that is very effective and all of that is very important. But the main portion of any meditative practice or any type of healing must start from being able to hear from self. And I think that it's very important in order to receive your spiritual solution. You have to know and understand you have a spiritual problem. You have to know what you want to change and be prepared for the future and what you want and desire. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing is you kind of have to filter and let go of your past and all the things that is holding you in your past. Yes. And energies and people pulling you back to your past. You know, just like you were talking, maybe we were taught a certain way. And if we sort of venture out and want to learn a new way, sometimes that pulls us back in the past. We desire wholeness, acceptance, love, success. We want to feel complete. We want to be understood. Being the best version of of ourselves in a relationship. But what stops us is fear and pain. This pain stores itself in the heart and flows out to different parts of your mind, body, and spirit. Fear and pain are natural experiences. However, we cannot allow them to define the aura and gateway to the spiritual heart. And so many times that's exactly what they do. You know, our experiences, when you talk about fear and pain, it's so, it's so natural. Everybody has experienced fear. Everybody has experienced pain. But sometimes we allow the fear and the pain to become de the defining source. Absolutely. The defining vibration. It takes over our energy field, takes over how we're conducting ourselves because everything within the energy system is vibrating to the frequency of that experience. And this is what 
keeps out receiving your solutions and your desires. You know, when I say receiving the solution, sometimes we, in most cases, we do know the solution, but what you know is not always what you receive. Knowing it and receiving it are two different things. Very different. And when you talk about what it is that we desire and you talk about what it is that stops us. Notice how the list is so different. The The list of what we desire is so long. <laughs> exactly. And then there's just two things. <laughs> yeah. Did you see? Fear and pain. Fear and pain. And one causes the other and the other causes the other. It's like they go back and forth. They're each responsible and connected to one another, these two emotions. So... Through anahata, we move past fear and pain without ignoring it. It's not about ignoring fear. It's not about ignoring pain. It's about identifying where the fear and where the pain is coming from. It's about not treating the symptom, but the cause. Absolutely. And that's one of the... Um major, I want to say, complaints mm -hmm. that the champagne community had was they would, you know, like we talked about before, watching the series on TV, reading the books, going online, ordering supplies or whatever it is that they were doing for that quick fix, mm -hmm. thinking that that would help them. And then it helped for a temporary amount of time but they never got to the source of the problem. Yes. And getting to the source of the problem and really saying, okay, well, the first thing is knowing, knowing that there is something off, that there is something wrong, knowing that I'm ready for my life to start, but something is there, something is holding back. You know, and that is the first step is information. And that's limited. That is limited. Yes. And, you know, sometimes what we find is that the information that we're searching for and that we need, it comes from so many different directions and that's okay. But what we find is that we are taking it in from somebody else's experiences. It's very important to take your information in from where you're at. That's why I say the most valid information, yes, learning how to do certain methods of meditation, learning how to do certain types of healing or identifying is important, but the most valid information is within self. And so through opening the gateway, through accessing information, we're using the information of methods using the information of the method to be applied to receive that inner solution of opening, receiving, and then this leads to the achieving. So many times when I have done healing work or clearing work, people have actually come in and started saying, I would like to work through this specific situation and then as we're starting to work on that situation, they are finding out and realizing that that is a symptom, mm -hmm. not the cause, not the cause, not the origin, not the genesis. So in Anahata meditation, what we're doing is we are going prior to the symptom and we are getting to the source. Where is the source? It is in the heart. Where is the solution? It is in the heart. Where is the information that you need? Everything is in the heart. So before anything comes into life, before anything is received, accepted, or embraced, the heart has to approve it. So for our listeners, when you talk about anahata, meditation, why don't you tell them a little bit in detail 
like if I was a caller and I said, I want to know more about this, or is it multiple sessions? Can someone have multiple sessions? Yes. Or is it just a one-time informational meditation? No. Now, there are people who do it that way. Right. And I know that when you were teaching, you would do like one session and give people some to do. The exactly. When we're doing one-on-one -on -one work, it is done like that when it is with a group. But when we are doing one-on-one -on -one work, it is more than one session. It is a group Good. of sessions. And this is where you're taking somebody from where they're starting, where they think they're starting mm -hmm. to be able to hear from their self of where it has really come from. And for some people, it could take three times, three meditative sessions. For some, it could take nine. For some, it could take one. Right. It really depends where people are at. So is it safe to say if I wanted a meditation that I would see you or call you and in that meditation, like you say, we can clear the background noise. Yes. We can clear the confusion in my head. Yes. To find out the real problem, to find out my purpose, to find out maybe what's imbalanced, to find out not just the symptoms, but what is causing whatever is going on in my life. It'll help me get the answer that I need to find the right tools to help myself. Absolutely. Because you have the tools, you have them, they're there, it, but it's like having something that you, and you just don't know where you've placed it. Exactly. Or maybe you've had it all along. You never knew that you had it. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's exactly what it is. It's opening the heart to receive and hearing the, the solutions that you have already stored in there based on the authentic self the self that's not communicating from ego, the self that's not communicating from pain, that authentic portion of self. And what we're doing is we are bringing down, it's just like you said, we're bringing down the noise. The background noise. But bringing down that background noise. And background noise could be the voice of mom and dad. Absolutely. Background noise could be the voice of a teacher. Mm-hmm could be the voice of, in some people's cases, and I've been dealing with this a lot this year, the voice of their church, uh -huh. the voice of a relationship of someone who has rejected them. So, but these voices, it, they take on your own voice. So when you're tapping into yourself, the limiting that you feel, that limited energy, that complete limitation, these limiting beliefs, if you will. Right. They're actually, they're not your beliefs. They're not your take. They're not your opinion, but they have sort of disguised themselves as your voice. Absolutely. It's disguised itself as your voice. So as we go into that meditation to open up that gateway, we are tuning that down. We're removing, well, first we're going to hear it. We're going to bring it to the surface. We need to hear it. We need to identify it to release it. But then we're going to tune that down so that we can hear from self. What does self have to tell you? You would be amazed at where people start in their journey and where people end in their journey once they are able to hear from their self. It's absolutely awesome. I know so many people and we've been getting so many emails and, and calls about this. People are very excited to want to know this, to start this, to, and there's been so many questions about this. And I, I have a lot of clients who tell me I can't concentrate. There's always a voice in my head. I'm thinking about what I need to do. I'm thinking about something that has happened in the past, like you said earlier. And I feel like that concentration is very hard for them to find. People are saying, maybe I have a concentration problem or maybe I have a, you know, a short attention span. And I believe that it is that. It is everything from our past that has connected itself to our inner voice and is disguising itself. 
And once that is brought to the surface and released, I think people are so surprised what their inner self wanted. I think <laughs> that it's when it when it comes to the surface and they hear, you know, I really want, you know, X, Y, and Z, they're almost surprised that that's what they wanted or that's, you know, the, the solution to whatever they're fighting in their life because all of the other voices for all the years have attached themselves. So that's, that is the number one reason why I love this meditation is yes. because it gives you the opportunity to hear from yourself, to meet yourself. Totally. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where we're all looking for solutions and we all want our, our desires met, but you have to be able to hear what they truly are and open yourself up to receiving that information. You have on a to new be level. ready. Yeah. You, have, you to. have to be ready. And you know, I believe that so many people right now at this time are ready. And there, there are people that I have talked to who have been ready for years and they just can't get their breakthrough. They just can't hear the solution that's already there. So for those of you who have been listening, if you would like to experience a complimentary session of Anahata meditation, please contact us after the show at spirituald.com or you can call us at 312-898 2285. And we'll, we will be back after this short break. Treat the body and expand the soul on June 1st with Lynn Brown. Imagine three days in a hand-built log home nestled in the Cascade Mountains. Activate the collaboration between the body and spirit and allow the accelerated connection as one of the most powerful ways to light up your cells, honor the body's needs in this all-inclusive event. Visit lynnmbrown.com or call 206-931-7356. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. The earth is an ever-changing being. Goddess Light, shamanic healer, Brie Gibbs, guides us through the ascending worlds, bringing forth knowledge and truth. As a light creator, she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution. Join Brie as she shares messages from guides, spirits, ascended masters, goddesses, and others. Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. 
You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? And we are back. Thank you for tuning in. And we are talking about Anahata meditation, which I'm very excited about. But I also wanted to talk about, you know, I always have to make sure our listeners are educated. I'm the educationer here. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to talk about, you know, because I've experienced some, some clients who has came in with some chakra problems and heart chakra problems. It's like, Oh, I, you know, they've already diagnosed themselves, which I love. And they, you know, call in and say, Oh, you know, I've, I've been diagnosed with a block chakra, a collapse chakra. And you know, this is what it is. And you know, most of the time they're correct. Isn't that that awesome? (laughs) Which I love, you know, um, but sometimes it's, it can, and, and, you know, we had a show about this misdiagnosed, right? And they feel they, and it's, it's, it's wonderful because they feel that it's in the heart, in the heart chakra. They know they're not giving or receiving properly. They know that they have trouble with affection or love or commitment, you know, things that, that happens in a relationship and especially in the heart. But when they, when I offer this meditation, they're like, no, I know it's my heart chakra, which is good Mm -hmm. because they're confident in their diagnosis, which is good. But also, you know, when they take the chance and say, yes, let's do it. And they find out it is connected to your heart. It is a problem that's in a chakra, but it's beyond. Yes. Because that's what the anahata gateway is behind your heart chakra yes in the middle so it almost it it's almost like it is in your heart chakra but a little beyond and so that's why I love this meditation because you know the client is right it is a part of the heart but it is beyond and so a lot of people that feel you have a heart chakra issue in balance maybe it collapsed And it's a very big possibility. And it could be that that is very true. But also you need to look beyond. Exactly. And and that's really what it's about. I mean, when you, you talk about opening your heart to receive your solutions, it's beyond what is in front of you. It's beyond what you've been through. It's the true essence of self. It's touching that truest portion. I call it the newborn portion. The newborn portion. I mean, you. this is where you are so new, so innocent, so fresh, so past and prior to any hurt, any pain or any experiences. This is that newness. And everybody, no matter how old we are, no matter how many lifetimes we've been here, we do carry that portion of self that's carrying the truest, unfiltered solution that lies within us. And, you know, a lot of us, and when I say a lot of us, I mean me too, (laughs) (laughs) want the quick fix. Yes. We do. We want the magic pill. We want the magic book. We want the magic wand. Mm -hmm. We want to bippity-boppity-boo our way into (laughs) um, our solution. You know, we want the, I'm in the perfect relationship. I'm giving. I'm receiving. I'm the perfect version of myself. I have the job I want, the life I want, the spiritual connection I want. And I wish that there was the bippity-boppity-boo magic wand to get us that, you know? 
But sometimes we just have to clear our mind, realize we need to put in a little bit of the work. And everything that we desire is in front of us. We can manifest anything we want. That job, that career, that relationship, that person, that self-esteem, that confidence, anything that we want, we can manifest. And opening that gateway, you will be able to hear exactly how and when and what steps to take in receiving your solutions and obtaining what it is that you desire and accessing that portion of self that knows you are worthy to receive just that and more. And for those of you who are listening, if you would like to experience an Anahata meditation in conjunction with a full life reading, which is our offer for everyone who has been listening to the show, you can go to our site, spirituald.com, or contact us after the show at 898, I'm sorry, 312-898-2285. That's 312-898-2285. And if you go to spirituald.com or call us, it's best to go to the website, I think, and then call us because you can choose and pick and get so much information. And that's what I like about our site, too, is it's very informational. So if you can see what services you think you might need or want or, you know, what I love is it gives you some symptoms. So even if you just go on there and see if you have some symptoms, I think is good. Exactly. Um, and then you can, you know try to find the tools. Maybe you're not ready for a service. Maybe you're not ready for a reading, which is fine. But at least you can see, well, maybe I have some of these symptoms. Maybe I want to go to Barnes and Noble and get a book on it. Maybe I want to Google it. Maybe I want to, you know, find out a little bit what's wrong before I, I commit myself to a service or a reading. Absolutely. And, and that's also why I love offering one of our services, and sometimes even more than one service, like we're doing today, the Anahata meditation with the full life reading with um, no commitment or no charge for you to get to experience what it's like to open up the gateway to the heart, open up to feeling what it's like to have a guided meditation and receive some insight, guidance, and answers. Yeah, I love this gift that that we're giving away today. I think that a lot of people are interested. I think a lot of people have said, I need to hear from myself. I need to meet myself. I need to go back, as you say, the genesis. Yes. And I feel like this is the perfect gift. Yes, it is. And I, I would like to tell everyone who has been listening that we have received a lot of your emails and we, you know, we haven't had a chance to answer people's questions over the air at this time, but we are going to be setting up a show that is questions and answers day where we are reading your letters and answering your questions. And for those of you who are sending us emails and you've mentioned that it's private and you don't want us to mention your, your name on the air, just Remember that we will not do that. And for those of you who have not added that, please email us letting us know that you do not want us discussing. Uh, you want your question answered, but you don't want us discussing who you are mentioning your name on the air. We respect everybody's privacy and confidentiality. And so in the shows coming up, we are going to do a Q&A, questions yes. and answers. And I'm very excited about that because I know – We've answered a ton of email and took a ton of calls, but there's some that some good ones I think we're saving for on air. I'm telling you, there are <laughs> some that I said these are shows in their cell. I know. They so are. We just want to dedicate a, a whole show, and we'll be doing that periodically to answering your questions. So if you have a question, jump online, spirituald.com, write us a note, an email. Post your questions. We're going to get them and read them online. 
And I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today as we talked about opening our heart to receive and hear our solutions and receive our desires in life. And it has been an absolute pleasure sending out to all of you love, light, light. and blessings. Thank you for <laughs> taking that for me and blessings. And blessings. Just in case you didn't want to finish it, I'll do it for you. Thank you so much. Namaste. You've been listening to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio, Psychic Answers and Spiritual Solutions with Carol Dorian and Justice Welling, diagnosing the spiritual cause of unwanted life patterns. For more information on your favorite healers, visit spirituald.com and tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio to receive your weekly dose of enlightenment.